Welcome to this part of the lecture. So far, the notion of a differential has come up a few times. So uh, for a smooth curve C, when we discussed the Riemann-Roch theorem, we talked about the space of rational differential forms. So this was a vector space over the function field of the curve uh, generated by abstract symbols, df for f in the rational function field, subject to these relations. Also, I briefly mentioned that in order to prove the Riemann-Hurwitz formula, you need sheaves of differentials. And from analysis, maybe you know that these differentials somehow are related to derivatives and there is this tangent space, cotangent space, and all that. So it is worthwhile taking some time to understand what differentials really are and to define all of this properly. So this is the purpose of the current lecture. And these differentials are a special case of what we call Kähler differentials in order of Kähler. And somehow these might measure anomalies of morphisms between varieties just in the same way as the dimension of the tangent space measures smoothness or non-smoothness. Now, we will start by looking at differentials, not in the case where we have um, curves or varieties, but in the case where we have algebras. So, why do we do that? Well, remember, if you have a map of affine varieties, then this corresponds to a map of algebras. And so in particular, maybe we call this algebra S and this algebra R. So this means that R is a commutative ring and S is a commutative R algebra. So this is the context we will start with, and then by gluing, we will get the general notion. So let therefore R be a ring, commutative and unital as usual, and S be an R algebra, again, commutative and unital. So the module of Kähler differentials associated to this pair of algebras is a pair of two things. The first one, omega SR, is an S module, namely it is the S module generated by the symbols ds for S in S, subject to these familiar relations that we had from before. Note that they say that this uh, association D is additive, it satisfies the product rule for multiplication of uh, for derivatives or the Leibniz rule, and should you take some r from your r ring, then dr is equal to zero. And so this d is simply the map from s to omega sr that maps s to the symbol ds. From this it follows that d is an r module homomorphism. So D is a map of additive, of, I mean, abelian groups because of this first condition. And if I take D of Rs with R in R and S in S, you can pause and perform the calculation yourself. So what you get is R D S plus S D R, but this is zero, so this is indeed R D S. And so this finishes the proof that this is R linear. Speaking of these things, maps that satisfy these conditions have a name. So if M is any S module, then an R linear derivation of S into M is an R-module homomorphism from S to M that satisfies these three conditions. Note that it is a module homomorphism of R-modules, not of S-modules in general. There is another way to define 
this pair, namely by a universal property. So if I have any S module M and any diff, uh, R linear derivation D prime from S to M, then there is a unique homomorphism of S modules from the module of Keller differentials to M such that the following uh, diagram commutes. So this is the unique So f is defined by mapping ds to d prime of s, and you can show that it is indeed a homomorphism of s modules. As a corollary, this precisely means, it follows immediately from this universal property, that derivations from s to m um, correspond to homomorphisms of S modules from the module of Keller differentials to M. So this is somehow the universal module of derivations and D is the universal derivation. If in this setting we take as R our algebraically closed field over which we usually work when we study curves and as S the uh, function field of our curve or in greater generality algebraic variety, then we get exactly the rational, um, uh, rational differentials that we used in the proof of the Riemann-Roch or in the discussion of the Riemann-Roch theorem. But in general, I can take, for example, as S the um, coordinate ring of uh, C in case C is affine and so on and get many more things. So if I want to view this module concretely as uh, uh, a module defined by generators and relations, so if my R algebra S is generated by a set SI of generators, finite or infinite, subject to relations RJ, so, so rj are here polynomials, so basically this is saying that S is the R algebra generated by these Si subject to the ideal generated by rj, the relations by ij. Then the module is generated by dSi subject to the relations drj. And there are a few things that one needs to uh, see. The first thing is that this means that it's enough to look at a set of generators. And this is because of the additivity and the Leibniz property that if we know what dSi is, then we know what dSisj is. If we know this for all i, then we know this, and so therefore we know this for all elements in S. So this is generated by this, and one can also show that the relations precisely become uh, these. The proof is not extremely instructive, but let's look at an example. If R is field K, and S is the algebra generated by ST, with the relation x squared minus t cubed equals zero, then omega s r is will be the module generated by. So this would be generated by d s and d t. These symbols. And the relation should be that this thing is equal to zero. And if you apply all of this Leibniz rule and additivity, you get the perhaps familiar formula 
2s ds equals 3t square dt. So this will be the uh, relation that uh, defines this module. In particular, this means that if s is finitely generated, then so is the module of Keller differentials. Now, let us think about what happens with Keller differentials when we change base. What does changing base mean? Let's look at that. So the thing you should have in mind is, say, complexification of real numbers or scalar extension in general. What I want to do is more general than Keller differentials. So if I am given an R algebra S, this means that I have a ring homomorphism from R to S, then given an R module M, um, I want to view M as an S module. So what I do is I tensor my uh, R module M with the ring S. And so now I can act on this module by scalars from S. So how do I act? Well, such an element is a linear combination of some elements S prime tensor M and simply I act in the first factor. So this means that now I can multiply, I can view my N as a module over S. And this is the natural S module structure. One then says that N is obtained from M by base change. So I have changed my base from R to S. And this construction is compatible with any possible algebraic structure on M. For example, if M is not only a module, but an R algebra, then uh, N, the base change, will be an S algebra, and so on, for other kinds of algebraic structures. But we will be mainly interested in algebras and modules. Scalar extension is an example. So this is, for example, when we have a field extension. So if I have K, a field extension into L, and I have M, a K vector space, then I get L tensor over K of M and L vector space. And I have a map of K vector space, now in general of, of modules in this construction, sending M to one tensor M. So this lives inside here somehow, but I can do this, ring, this scalar extension for rings, not just for fields. Quotient projection is another example. So if S is equal to R modulo some ideal, then I can extend, well, I have M. Uh, from it, I construct Rj tensor M. So this basically means that I kill the action of J on M is what this uh, base change achieves. Localization is another uh, way. So if S is R localized at some prime ideal, then I can localize M at a prime ideal. So I map M will go to R P. Sorry, M. Then I have some geometric situations. So in pictorially, Maybe I have some variety X here, or maybe this is Y, and here I have a variety X and a map of varieties. Then this corresponds to a ring extension from uh, the ring, if these are affine varieties, a ring homomorphism from the coordinate ring of y to the coordinate ring of x. And this means that if I have whichever structure I might have here over y, 
So you can view, uh, say, a module over this algebra as some structure over this variety. So by lifting it, I change the base from y to x. This is a geometric idea behind this name. So uh, since we're talking about tensor products and all that, before we embark on the scalar extensions, let's take a look at an alternative description of the module of Kähler differentials. So uh, if you have S and R algebra, then you have a map, the multiplication map of S. So you can view this as a map from S tensor S to S. So you look at the kernel of this multiplication map. And I have a typo here, this ideal I want to call I delta. One can show that this ideal is generated by all forms, all elements of this form. It is clear that these elements belong to the ideal because 1 times s minus s times 1 is 0. So it's in the kernel of the multiplication. And one can show that anything in the ideal comes from these. This generates the ideal. And then the map that sends an element S to this element in the ideal, well, this is a map from S to this ideal I delta. And by composing it with the quotient projection with respect to the square of the ideal, I can show that this is an R linear derivation. The proof is by computation, so uh, check the properties for derivation and remember that modding out with i squared, meaning that whenever you have a square or a product of two elements in i, you set that equal to zero. And this precisely helps uh, the defining rules of derivations to be satisfied. And this derivation from S to this module by the universal property. This means that I get a module homomorphism from the universal module of derivations, the Keller derivations, to this quotient. And it turns out that, in fact, this map is surjective and injective, so you have an isomorphism of modules. So the way, one way to view this uh, module of Keller differentials is as this quotient module. And the reason I brought this alternative uh, description up is that in the coming lectures, we might want to generalize this module to define it as a sheaf of modules. And then this description will be the most helpful to globalize in that way.